have to endure it. And again, it is sort of, uh, we're just seeing the strength of Four Zoomers, really just previous lineup. They also had a Medusa versus A there. So while this uh, Ice Blast into the Chronosphere is going to be very impactful, it also feels as if this Medusa gets a little bit too big. You are going to be the monster. You are going to be able to have all these heroes behind you. You don't have uh, the same amount of support just because you do have Alina slotted in over that Enchantress. So maybe you don't have the whiffs in the buy the buy but you do have that Sunray. You do have that incredible heal. And if you are able to cast that Stone Gaze and that Arena at the same time as that egg goes down, there is no way the four Zoomers heroes are able to contend with that. And that's where I do think we are going to sort of see them shift away and try to be a little bit more mobile, pick and choose their fights a lot more. And that's what this Timbersaw does kind of say. We saw this Timbersaw Void Invoker, I think in a D2 Hustlers draft before where everybody wants to farm, everybody wants to get out on the map. And that sort of plays into the Medusa where all of that farm is going to be concentrated on one hero on the Undying side, where if four Zoomers can get this Tricor off off the ground they're going to feel very confident into a lot of those fights especially around the roche pit the only thing that undying does have sort of in their favor is they are radiant so again if they are able to post up in that dire uh jungle near the outpost they're able to sort of swap sides we can definitely see that coming in and four zoomers are doing the exact opposite of what undying said in that previous game where we aren't going to play objective based we aren't going to now try and push you down push into the roche pit and try and get an advantage that way instead we're going to meet you on fair ground we're going to draft some team fight of our own we're going to be incredibly obnoxious for you mr uh, tomato on that medusa in this matchup the invoker versus dusa it's always been very invoker favored i think only now maybe it sort of shifts in the medusa's favor just because if you get that cold blood if you get that ags and then the invoker does something as careless as maybe throw out a uh, cold snap you can definitely get punished and there are definitely situations where even if you do have that medusa in that chronosphere do you have enough damage for her are you going to be able to scale there are a lot of questions that four zoomers really do have in their lineup but I think if they, or if there's one team who knows how to play versus the Undying lineup so far, it is for Zoomers. Literally just played it. They know exactly about the timings. There's a little bit less flexibility in Undying's lineup as well. And when you copycat a team like this, especially in a best of five, mentally, you have to wonder if four Zoomers lose versus it, what is that going to do to their mentality? Because are they going to now think that, oh, the Mars is just something we need to ban out? Is it something to be overvalued? Is the AA something we need to start undervaluing? Really, the mind games are sort of everywhere right now. One of the most sort of interesting and beautiful things about the best of five right now for game three in a normal series, no one would care. It would all be about game three. That's the end of the series. It's do or die. But now with the series extended, you do have to sort of wonder about that. How much does this play into the mindset of really both teams based on the results here? So it is going to be exceptionally interesting to see just how both teams react. And honestly, uh, outside of just who straight up wins this game, there's going to be some implications further down the line as we are going to have at least one more game beyond this point. So see what goes down here for zoomers on the clock now looking for what should be their position for support Points away. they are going to get that pangolier we've seen ocean on that hero multiple times recently for four zoomers and he really does tend to have quite the impact with this pango so undying are gonna to have to be a little bit careful about that if he can get in there and sort of get that initiation going with the rolling thunder it always is a threat to sort of break up your own rhythm as a team yeah, a hero that plays very well versus the Medusa. You get the lucky shot up. You can't really trade with him. And you are going to have that POS 5 Phoenix where we saw where you weren't really able to force out the Tidehunter in that 2v1 situation. So Tomato did just end up farming. But it feels like, what are you going to now get done on this Phoenix Dubu? Are you going to rotate around? Are you going to play into the Pango, try to mirror him up? And like you said, I have not seen Ocean have a bad Pango game. And Pango is a hero that I was surprised that Saberlight didn't end up playing in that previous game. I really think Undying, they got ahead of themselves. They got a little bit too cocky, being hot, three games up on the day. And now I do like this Void Spirit pick a lot. Really good versus the Invoker. Really good versus really just both supports it's sort of the counter matchup where now we're seeing the ember spirit for sort of forced out for that void spirit and while i do think the void spirit is a little bit stronger just physically he's a little bit tankier naturally and he's a little bit more obnoxious 
he can definitely be punished. That is a hero that will die in the chrono, that will die to that AA blast, and there's not really anything you can do to circumvent that again, aside from, again, having those good individual performances, having that team fight, and we'll see, because four Zoomers, they can definitely kite you. That's something that Undying very, very, very strictly lacked in that previous draft, where Undying's lineup, it was made to fight, it was made to fight soon, it was made to fight after Roche. Four Zoomers have geared completely in the other direction. They say, we'll choose when to fight, we'll get you sort of running at our towers, we'll disarm you, we'll throw out everything in the kitchen sink, and then you can fight us, and then we'll see how that goes. So I really like, again, both of these drafts, they've got very few holes in it. I think these are really just the best teams at this tournament, so I'm very glad to see them both really head off, and really everything is just 50-50. Yeah, there's no real sort of clear advantage based on the drafts. They're just sort of that good as teams and that even, but that means it's going to come down to the execution. It's all going to be about the focus here on really who gets those combos down, who can sort of protect those all-important carries, right? The Faceless Void and the Medusa are going to have to be set up for success quite nicely, and whichever team is going to be able to pull that off with more consistency, I would say, will be the team pulling away. But as of right now, it's unbelievably hard to tell who that's going to be. But either way... Should be in for a good. Oh god! Should be in for a good match. As we get to hear the. Magics bring me here, to now. That's not the line that it says it was. Okay, that's a little bit weird. Doesn't matter. It's one voice line after another. So uh, there's an invoker in this game. In case you weren't aware of that, as we do see a smoke play from Undying. That smoke play does absolutely nothing. They just run directly into Sammy, and then Saberlight just literally walks away from it. So. I mean, they got the ward up. I think that's really all they cared about in this situation, but that was just kind of awkward. Saberlight and Sammy just come face to face and away. Yeah, both kind of just split off in the other direction. And again, have these wards seeing uh, uh, really just Pango coming mid because really Bryle could die to something as simple as just one swashbuckle. He's going to have to go for that 1-2-2 two, two build. Probably going to farm up a little bit more with that dissimilate. And really, Void Spirits have really been sort of inconsistent where if you get your Yule Scepter maybe around that 16, uh, 17 minute mark, your hero does feel a lot better. It feels like you're able to make these plays. But if you ever fall behind, we've seen Void Spirits get completely shut out of games where, okay, sure, you do have to bind your time. You don't really have the most fantastic setup. And again, Undying have drafted themselves a lineup where a lot of this Disable and this Lockdown is going to come in from Brow and Saberlight. And we saw how well they were at sort of getting their jobs done in that first game but then game two i think everything really did fall uh fall it fell apart really really quite fast they really weren't able to get the same amount of uh work done as you could say but mid looks like prowl yeah hero is still uh pretty good at last setting not really gonna have a crazy amount to be worried about right now gunner even uh going in for the wex first so I don't know. Maybe he can hit up that EMP. He did try for it there. Brow doesn't really care about it too much. So this should not really be a lane where we see too much aggression until one of these two really sort of gets those levels. Brow needs the damage and needs the lockdown with the Remnant. And Gunner is honestly at this point probably actually going to just straight up need a rotation. The Tornado EMP, I highly doubt that's ever going to be enough damage to get Brow down unless he is being way too risky and just sort of sitting there with just a tiny sliver of HP when Gunner sort of pushes towards him. So, looks like for now it's going to be just a bit of a farming focus, but Gunner's pulled back in by oh, that he's Remnant. He's by the stuck. creeps. Yeah, oh, those wow. creeps really kind of doing him in there. Doing Gunner dirty a little bit, but he's only going to take maybe an extra attack or two, so he should be fine. He's still got two more Tangos in the tank, along with, obviously, the regen uh, from the Quas points. So, overall, feels like he is going to be okay, but as I said, this one might just be a little bit slow until we see more strength built up on Ryle and Gunner. Yeah, really, the only time this matchup gets scary for Gunner is when power runes get involved and the Astral Step starts being a factor, where Void Spirit does become very similar to Ricky, one of the best heroes in the game, versus the Invoker, where he does not like whenever there are these heroes playing on top of him. And Gunner, nice little EMP there. He is sort of... yeah. Can Brian okay, he's do dancing. This? Would need a little bit more mana for the Resonant Pulse, but that might have been enough. But he decides it's not quite worth the effort. Gunner's going to fall back. He sees the Water Rune, but he doesn't have a bottle right now. So 
This might be a little bit risky. Bryle could actually take that out from under him, and then this lane's going to potentially potentially turn a little bit. So, kind of strange the gunner didn't go straight for it, but that might have been a little bit too obvious with the creep wave sort of pushing in onto him. He'd have just gone all out with the sprint for the water rune there. But, again, I mean, Bryle's going to take it for himself, and gunner, I don't know, what's he bringing out to himself right now? Does he have any more regen coming? Courier is mm. delivering a salve and a clarity out to him, so... That should be enough to sort of keep him going in this lane right now, but we do see him ever so slightly starting to fall behind Ryle last hit wise. Yeah, and this is a lane where it is sort of miserable. You can't really get the knives out. You can always guarantee those range creep last hits, but this always happens. You're always able to get a few more right clicks out with that Rafe and Remnant hits, but Tomato, bottom. They caught him in the swash. Yubu pushes in with the Icarus dive, and they are able to sort of secure that kill. Brax, meanwhile, Gonna get hit by the spirit. He's gonna be forced to fall back, and this timber. He's holding a point. There we go. We'll put it up into the sort of reactive armor there, but one point in chain, two points in armor means Brax really doesn't have a whole lot of damage and wasn't able to sort of fight back when Ocean got into trouble there. So this is a lane where Tomato and Dubu really don't have to be all that afraid. If Dubu just holds the Icarus dive in most situations, he's almost impossible really to bring down unless he just. Takes his hands off the keyboard, I guess. I mean, Brax doesn't have the whirling death, so they're really not going to have that kind of burst potential. And with all of these trees quelled, I think he killed them with the Icarus dive. There isn't really that easy timber chain option for Brax to be able to get those last hits, and he's not doing too bad for himself last hit wise, but there have definitely been some range creeps that just have been unable for him to get. Brax and once you get that second here. point, yeah, mid. Gonna be able to get himself away, but Dubu now sort of steps in to bite that bullet, but he's not dead yet either, and Bryle, he walks yeah. back in. Bull's gonna with the Aether Remnant, there's gonna be the Dissimilate, they did hit him up with the Fire Spirit as well, and yeah, Bryle's got it, and Husky, oh god, Husky, wandering a little bit in there, Moon Meander's gonna be able to spot him out, should get the last hit in for the kill. Ocean, however, was able to get some damage with that Swashbuckle to finish off Dubu, so they don't come away empty-handed, but... One kill going their way for two, including the Invoker being taken down. So if you're undying, you are very much happy with that one. Bryle's going to be able to get a bit of an edge on his opponent. And we're just about five minutes in. They've got a 2k lead. All three of their cores at the top of the last hit shard right now. Yeah, they're having an absolutely fabulous time in Saberlight. Again, you really can't put too much pressure onto this Void. The biggest benefit is that you can always knock him away from those creeps, from those ranged creeps, and without uh, Husky in the lane for just a little bit there, you really see him sort of pull away. And actually, they're going in. I think you should be able to cue that off, though. Yeah, not too much damage, but still, it's something. It's forcing uh, Sammy Boy to at least get a little bit more regen sent out to him. Yeah, he is sitting on... Some wand shards there, that's going to be able to heal him up a little bit, but as you said, just needs that little bit more brought out to him, but now Moon, this is not a great spot, he's going to get hit up by the Bash, the Cold Feet won't proc, but the Dilation is still there for the slow and nice the DOT. Dodge. Uh, Sammy should have this. Nope. Okay, I thought Husky was going to steal it for a second with that final right click, but it wasn't actually enough, so Sammy does get the kill, and Moon Meander, eh, I mean, there's really nothing he was going to be able to do there, that's just sort of the risky run when you're playing that far forward, and Saberlight... Really just had to step away only for a little while, but it provides that window that four zoomers needed, and they do manage to bring that one down. And now that siege creep, not going to do a lot to the tower either. And really, it's just going to be up to how well Saberlight is able to make those rotations. We've seen Marzas be pretty much the entire tournament, unless it gets banned out in that first phase. And if you are able to make those early successful rotations, it feels like this hero is one of the few that spiral out of control. And yeah, mid gunner. gunner. Can he really do anything here? Ocean's going to try to help out, but it's not going to be enough. Here washed. Okay. Now he said Ocean, too. yeah, he's just gone. Ralph should be able to lock him down here. And yeah, two kills in the middle lane. The rotations from Undying coming through once again. And uh, the four Zoomers have not exactly responded fantastically to that. It's bad enough to lose the Invoker, but then Ocean just kind of wanders in and gets taken out. Husky's got to be careful here too. By this point, it looks like Undying are sort of starting to fade away, but... Just in case, he might want to play it safe, and yeah, we do see the Invoker now coming in. So it looks like he's going to be fine, but uh, Moonbeander actually rotated his way bot. He and Tomato get a little bit of damage in onto Brax, but they're not going to be able to kill him unless... No, no unless. Timbersaw no. just chains across, and he's just fine. And really, that's going to be the rotation that is going to be a little bit of a struggle for Undying, where who is going to kill this Timbersaw? Who's going to come? And really, the only hero to answer that question is Saberlight. He's the only hero I'm really watching in my mind, and 
They're trying to chrono him top, okay. but they He's need a lot of dashes here. a little here. awkward from Dubu. Yeah, he actually TP'd into the chrono, but it's not going to matter. Saberlight drops down the arena. Uh... I don't know about this one. Brile, though, oh. has made his way over, and he wants in. Resonant Pulse coming through, hitting up onto Husky. They will be able to find that kill, and I think that's all they're going to get, but that at least turns that into a bit of a trade across the map, as the Lina was picked off uh, sort of elsewhere, and one for one, not really going to be a big deal. Brile was able to make the rotation, gets back into lane. Moon Meander TP's in time to refill his bottle here as well, and efficiency-wise, everything sort of works out for the best for Undying. Yep, the only unfortunate uh, case there is that Gunner is falling behind a little bit. He makes an unsuccessful rotation where you would love to see him just be able to farm up a little bit more. But again, that's where this Void Spirit can sort of respond at every point. And I, uh, I think, unfortunately, you had to use that uh, arena there just to dissuade the Invoker a little bit more. I think they would have made a play onto Sammy Boy if that Tornado and EMP didn't come out. But just split-second decision there. If Saberlight wanted to go, and he would have definitely died for his team. And they're making an attempt here. So they're going to have to, yeah, the kill the Pango first. Not able to hit him up they step, whiffed though, on the re they're Remnant. They're okay. still going. Ocean's dropping low. Ryle, no mana, though, really, and no spells remaining. So... He's going to have to back off. Saberlight, though, is not in a great spot as Brax just straight up runs him down. Shotgun comes through. Saberlight dead, and it's a minor misplay there, but the yeah, the lack of the Aether Remnant for the lockdown means they don't get Ocean, and Brax is just left to dish out all the damage he wanted. Yeah, and that's where I do think they will struggle to push down this Timbersaw, and if they can get the farm in the side lanes, if this Brax Timbersaw can get maybe a few more towers, he's going to be incredibly happy, and Okay, Brow is farming up uh, underneath uh, an enemy ward, but... Tornado. Oh, got the step. MP. There's the step, yep. Yeah. Cold Snap was able to hit him up, but not actually enough lockdown to keep him from jumping away. So, they protect the stack at least, and now here comes Brax looking to take it. So, this Timber, he really is starting to find quite a bit for himself. Highest net worth on his own side. Obviously, behind the Medusa. You're not exactly going to catch up to her right now, but... As you said, Brax is building himself up. He is... Presumably going for that sort of Hood of Defiance play next. Not quite there yet, but got to assume he's going to reach that point in the next couple of minutes as there's a bit of a group up mid. Gunner's here. Brax is moving in as well. Husky's in position. Doesn't have level 6 yet, though, so without the Ice Blast, don't know if they're looking for the fight, but they could just take the tower. Or at least attempt and, to. And, yeah, there's not much they can do about it. There isn't a cart, unfortunately. It's not even that this strikes a little bit beforehand, but actually, another Whiff Remnant. Okay. They have got to hit those. Meanwhile, uh, I don't know if this is a safe TP. Yeah, he will cancel it out as the Lina was TPing into the middle of about three enemy heroes there. So, and Moon Meander, I mean, we've seen him play sacrificially. Oh, no, yeah, one TP top. Suicidal for the TP, but he's still in trouble. Sammy goes in. Gunner's there for the extra lockdown. And, well, yeah, that really isn't going to matter on the Laguna. Sammy is able to just walk it off. Meanwhile, over in the middle lane, Husky, he gets himself picked off. Saberlight pushes forward for the kill, but... Feels like that's really just going to sort of come out to an even exchange with both of the supports being taken down. But now, is there a response mid? Dubu's going to get hit up here. He doesn't have the Icarus dive, so if Brax can get in for the damage, might be able to bring him down. But with Ryle and Saberlight there as well, this is going to get a little bit complicated. However, Ooh. Sammy Boy, he's into the fight. He's got the Chrono Hook deployed. Now they uh, hit up that Supernova. They need support. Uh, oh, the Remnant. Somebody needs to hit it. They're not going to be able to get it. Supernova will pop. And now Sammy is actually the one who's trapped in the middle of this fight. He'll be taken down, and that is incredible. Dubu just gets it off in the nick of time there. That Supernova completely changes that fight, despite the fact that the Chrono hits onto two. And for Zoomers, I don't, I don't really know about this. Brax is going to push his way forward, but Tomato's right there. Brax won't yeah. back down. Okay. Doesn't really need to either. It honestly is really unfortunate that Aether Remnant that sort of made that split-second decision sort of falter for you. And all of his team, they are melee heroes. If the AA wasn't able to get into a position, nobody else is going to help you hit that egg. The Invoker was just barely out of range. I think he even missed once on the uphill. So there was really no chance for that egg to go down. And Sammy Boy, you use your Chronosphere. If you don't get anything, you get killed in return. And... Something uh, to mention, every single time Gunner is making these rotations, he's doing a remarkable amount of walking. He's just going from lane to lane. He hasn't really set aside any time for him to hit creeps, and that's not something that Quas Wex Invoker is particularly good at. But really, if he's unable to find heroes to play versus, this is going to be one of those Invoker games that really starts to fall behind. And they're trying to make another play, but yet again, this is just a lot of walking. This is a lot of time that you're committing and not really getting any return. 
Yeah, and you see that sort of reflected in the net worth. Gunner, the lowest among those core heroes right now. So we previously saw some of these issues for D2 Hustlers with Papa Tutti, a sort of similar scenario where you get so, uh, so caught up trying to find those fights, and if you don't get those kills, you're not farming enough to really sort of keep pace with your sort of counterpart on the other side. So Gunner's going to have to sort of take some time, try to catch up here. He's working his way towards a hand of Midas, so... If you can finish that one off, that's going to at least slightly alleviate those concerns, but he's still a couple hundred gold away from it right now, so it's not exactly an imminent purchase, and I don't really know right now if Gunner's going to be able to set anything up. In fact, it's his teammates who might be getting jumped in on. Ocean's got to be very careful here in the north side jungle. Mid, though? Oh, middle lane, they're going to push in. They spotted out the Mars. Can they bring him down? Saberlight is going to get hit up, so they will bring him down, but... This is a problem. Brax gets hit up by the stone gaze. He's going to get sort of trapped up here. The Laguna Blade will be deployed, but that Timber Chain gets him all the way across the lane, and I think he's going to make it out. They can't really lock him down, so instead, they'll try to turn their attention onto Gunner, but they don't have the vision onto him. Gunner wants to turn around, but the Supernova on the high ground, they're really not going to be able to make this play. Ocean, though, still going in, but once he sees the Supernova, he's going to back off as well. Didn't really have the vision uphill, I think, so Pangolier tried to start that play, but very wisely backs away before he can be caught, but Ryle's still chasing. They want in onto this. Astral Step gets him in. There's going to be that remnant. Ryle had maybe not been 100% accurate with it before, but he's able to get it down there, and Ocean will be picked off. And now you do have uh, the Chronosphere. You don't have the Egg anymore. You do have this Mars Arena, so it feels like it is a very interesting position both sides are in at this point. Ryle is uh, a little bit out of mana here, and this bottle is going to be able to refill up just a bit of it. But again, this is time that Gunner, I'm not sure if he's happy with the position he's in. Uh, really just an incredible chain from Brax. If he doesn't get that off, then everything kind of goes to hell. At the same time, I think Moon also could have prioritized that LSA over the Laguna Blade. He really only had enough time for one spell, so it's a little bit unfortunate. But at the same time, I think in Dying, they're very happy. Really, the only uh, sort of gold lead, it, the difference maker is sort of the 1k net worth between Moon Meander and the enemy team supports and that Void Spirit being as successful as he is. And here we go again. There's no save. By the Remnant, he's just straight up gone. The Spear even actually oh, takes Ocean out Moon of that fight. But yeah, they do manage to get that down. Ocean's going to make sure, rolling in there for the kill. So Moon is taken down. But now Ocean, eh, you got to make sure There's you're no clearing step, out of this. But... No step. Okay, yeah, he can't really make that play happen. But Ryle, he was sort of inching towards it almost like he wanted it. But now they realize, yeah, Sammy's up here. That is not a scenario we're going to push into. That chrono to the face would not be fun. So they will back themselves away. But perfect trade. You get Gunner. You sacrifice Moon Meander's Lena. That's really the exact sort of sacrificial play that he's always been looking to make. So nicely done by Undying. And now, well... What is, uh, what is Tomato working on here in the jungle? He's closing in on the Manta as his next major item. Yeah, and everything, just space for Bedusa. At the end of the day, if they're not really sort of feeding on all fronts on the Undying side, they are going to be happy with what's going on. Blink Dagger also finished up on that Mars, so maybe we see him get a little bit more aggressive. And you see Sammy Boy sort of positioning to make a play with Brax. They know that if they can chrono this Mars, they can definitely kill him with the damage coming out from that Timber Saw, but... Undying are making the exact counter call they need to make where we are going to play on this invoker and gunner He needs to be so careful. He wants to keep as many runes out of Brow's hand as possible But it's this ward back here that they're scouting out gunner and they have the Yules on Brow. If he's not careful This is just going to be another kill Gunner pushing forward tornado will be deployed, but there's saber light in oh. they don't get the spear to latch though a little bit off on the arena being formed and gunner is going to be able to walk away that Bit of a bit lucky break for him honestly yeah a very uncharacteristic whiff coming out from saberlight to be honest and that would have been again a hundred percent a kill invoker without blank dagger there's not much you can do even once you have that blank it still feels pretty risky and again you're just able to walk away reset you're very happy if you're four zoomers and that's going to claw back that lead a little bit and now gunner he has that midas this ward is just paying so many dividends though from undying they see that complete smoke out and Dubu's gonna sit here on purpose and pop it. Yeah, perfectly played from the Phoenix. They're at least gonna be able to take out that Ob's Ward, but that's not really worth it. Their smoke play breaks up, and now they're going for the Tier 1 Tower. Saberlight's in there, though, for Ooh. the oh boy, for the Spear that doesn't connect. So Tower is gonna continue to take hits here. Samuel Boy wants in onto it, but the Glyph is gonna slow them down. And at this point, this is feeling like it's gonna turn into some sort of fight. I don't know who makes the first move, but they're just sort of 
inching closer and closer together. Sammy Boy does have the Chrono, so if they can find the right target, they can move in as Dubu. He's going to be forced to pop down that Supernova, but four Zoomers aren't in a position to really punish that. So they do back themselves away, but hey, that's, that's Supernova down. That is a yeah, big cool. aspect of the team fight that Undying don't have. And now uh, Brax... Uh, I don't know what happened there. He just jumps into the middle of it, and I mean, Supernova's down, but that's no excuse to jump into five, really, by yourself. And now Sammy is on the run, trying to get himself away. He's going to get slowed oh. up a little bit here. Can he time walk this off? No, the Yule Scepter will lock him down, but the Tornado, even Perfect. from the Invoker, not going to be enough. Ryle pushes forward, gets the kill, and that Oh, and even more. So they found Gunner. They've got Gunner. They hit him up with the dust. He is trapped in the arena, and there's just nowhere for him to go. They're going to be able to lock him down. That is the most optimistic TP I have ever seen out of Gunner. There's no way he was getting out of that one as Ryle locks him down and Undying with a fight that I really feel like shouldn't have happened. I mean, yeah, the Supernova gets whiffed, but Brax just sort of goes all in. His teammates weren't ready to back him up, and they will be punished heavily for it with three deaths. And even though you force out that arena, I think this is something that we've seen a few times with Ocean's Pango. He plays fantastically, he's very efficient and very effective with what he's able to do, but it does feel like sometimes he is maybe just a skip or two behind his teammates, and he's just sort of outside of the, the rift there, and he just TP's top, immediately dies, but when you are playing sort of reactively, where we have to commit the ulti, we have to commit the chrono, and Hussey's gonna get taken down as well, Using these ultimates becomes a much harder decision for both of those players to make where if I feel like I'm wasting it, I am going to no longer have it. I'm going to have to sit around. I'm going to have to wait. And that's where Brax, I don't know if he needs to change his play or you need to maybe have some better ideas of when to go in because sometimes it feels like this Ocean Pango is incredibly aggressive and incredibly effective. And at least he was able to finish the Blink Dagger before he died there. But if you are not in a position to save the Invoker, to save the Timbersaw, they die extremely quickly. You have this Laguna Blade, you have this Moon Meander Lina that's gone off to a much better start this time around. I think he's got a full Aether Lens now completed, so this is going to sort of continue to be an issue. And now Brow, only two components away from his Aghanim Scepter as well, the Undying items are sort of being finished out a little bit sooner than you are getting on the four zoomer side. And again, with this Faceless Void, you do not have a fantastic tower pusher. You are not going to be able to rat and sort of play that objective-based Dota. Instead, you need to win these team fights, and you need to win them pretty convincingly. Otherwise, again, we're going to see a repeat of pretty much the last game to a T. Just not really sure. Four zoomers have got to sort of turn it around here, but... Uh, this doesn't really seem like the greatest of positions to do it in. Gunner and Ocean are just kind of going to sit under the tower waiting to see what happens. That's oh. okay. It's Mato. Manta Dodge dodges two it and out. Gunner. Saber lights in. Oh boy. Arena into Spear into Supernova. Tomato gets the kill. Tier 2 tower will be taken down. And I, like I said, I don't know if that was really the situation to do it in. Once that tornado EMP is oh, deployed, more. they know he's there and they're looking for even more. Hussey's going to get jumped in on the steps of his own base and, uh, Okay. Hmm. I feel like they probably could have just pushed in there to finish it. There was still a haste up on the void, but they would prefer to go after the tower. They'll be able to get to tier two, and now Ocean wants in. Can they do this? They've oh, they actually... knocked him oh, up. Oh, no. Saberlight pushed onto the high ground. Sammy Boy going to get hit up by the eighth remnant as well, so that's going to slow nice. down his initiation, but Proto's still deployed. They take down Moon Meander. They're going to be able to get Saberlight here as well, but, well, that's about as good as you were going to get there. Double kill for Sammy, but you let Brile get away, and you do still lose the tier two, but... It's going to be something for them. They're at least able to salvage a play in that scenario, but you're undying. You're still up by 6k. Tomato's still just farming away this entire time, and he is closing in on the uh, on the Scotty purchase. So this Medusa is going to get so unbelievably hard to bring down as Brax trying to take the tower. Can he actually get it? Nope. Denied by Brian. And that's where you do have a little bit of a better setup versus this Medusa, right? You are going to be able to kite her a little bit more. You are going to be able to use your abilities a little bit more effectively. But at the same time, if Sammy Boy is able to get those two-man chronos, that's exactly what he needs to do. Fortunately for them, Undying were already on the way out. After that tier two, the Husky kill would have been great, but it did feel like they sort of knew what was coming. And Sammy Boy, he needs to continue to find these plays, but pre-BKB is well, a problem jumped in on they hit him up that's the laguna blade in there as well and dubu gets the kill with and the sunray and is that roche yep they're just going straight in for it they're gonna take it they even get the outpost there as well so there's no longer that tp point or zoomers would have to go effectively to the tier two mid if they want to make this play and 
I don't think they want to. Without Sammy, how much can you really contest this? They're just going to sort of let it go, but that'll be the Aegis into the hands of Undying. And that's where it does feel like Undying are continued to get more and more speed, and maybe they catch Dubu being a little bit greedy here. He is the sole defender of the bottom tower, but even then, he just kills your creep wave. He walks out. They've got to dive really deep. Ocean's already started it, and okay. It's going to be the Supernova, though. Will they bring it down in time? Not exactly the fastest attackers yeah, here, but... Yeah, they got it. And Brax and Ocean get it done, but while that was all happening, Roshan goes down. Tomato grabs the Aegis, TPs in, and... Husky? Uh, before Zoomers, you got to leave. Husky is going to try to get himself out. He should be TPing away. However, well, the Pangolier is not going to be so lucky. Growl hits him up with the Revenant. Saberlight comes in for the damage. And they will be able to find that kill. It is still just a support at the end of the day, but they only lost a support on their own side. And the Tier 2 tower is still standing. So Dubu really just kind of called upon to sacrifice himself. He does do so. His teammates turn that into a one-for-one -one trade. And the Aegis is in the hands of the Medusa. So now Tomato is going to be even more intimidating. You're already sort of struggling to get any pressure onto him. Zero deaths for the Medusa so far, and now you're going to have to get through him twice to win this next fight. That's okay. And Saber Light. Yeah. Again. Onto the Gunner Invoker. Where's the follow up? There it is. Tomato's in. Brow's going to get there as well, and that is going to be Gunner taken down. So Saber Light starts it off, has to back away there. He was copping a little bit too much damage, but Undying are able to sort of follow it up. They get the kill. They're looking for the tier two mid now, and control of the map is really really starting to swing into their hands in a way that four zoomers just straight up can't counter right now and really you're not even getting more damage coming out from this void he's going for that bkb because he's terrified oh. and so he got speared up Brown oh, needs to get in they there need for the yules the oh they got it yules down aether remnant deployed do they have the lockdown moon manders gonna hit him up the lsa into the laguna and sammy's gone thanks a lot they absolutely can't afford these deaths right now but against that much lockdown Really, what do you do? If you're Sammy Boy, free BKB, there's just no response. He gets picked off in back-to-back -back instances, and Undying are really just everywhere that they want to be right now. They've got so much lockdown, so much ability to sort of cross the map there, too, as those heroes came all the way, really, from the north side jungle to the east in enough time to sort of follow up on that initial play from Saberlight. And now it's just you have the Medusa Mars. You're always going to make him sort of face in the right direction, and Rax. another one. Rax, what you doing, bud? Into the That's... Sunray. He's just going to die. Wow. Very questionable decisions from Brax here. He's only gone down twice, but it just feels like he's not quite on the same page as some of his teammates at this point in time, just getting sort of caught out there. And uh, speaking of caught out, Gunner, it, it's time to go. He's got to leave. The tornado will be deployed, and we'll see if he can find a spot to TP out in, because if he doesn't, Saberlight's onto him. The oh, there's no way available. this works. Oh, you're kidding. Oh. Ooh. Does still get the dust down, though, so Gunner on the Moon's run. Moon's here. coming in. There's the Yules yep. into the LSA, into the Laguna, and Gunner, I mean... Ah, right? That's just so frustrating for him to get caught out there. He even sort of saw it coming a little bit, threw out that tornado, started backing away, but just doesn't actually create the separation he needs. And he has TP. He would be able to just back off. Doesn't get a little greedy. He doesn't even kill that creep wave. He lets it walk past him. And again, all this vision, Samuel was able to reclaim his own outpost and still working on one more BKB component. But this is where we've seen voids continue to suffer, where you do get sort of pushed back. You don't get that much damage. And if you can't rely on your teammates, then it is going to feel quite terrible. We haven't gotten to see them even play Dota really yet. We haven't been able to see a combo happening with that Chronosphere. We saw the one play top, but it feels like there is just sort of some disconnected play. Those performances aren't as clean as they uh, were in some of those previous games versus Undying. And even Ocean, we're seeing something I praised a lot in the beginning of the series where Husky and Ocean are both always so impactful on their heroes. And I really think that they're struggling. And again, you took this AA, this is strategically very wise. You have the first pick. You want to pull it out of Dubu's hands. But I feel like I've seen Husky do so much more on so many different heroes that I'm a little sad to see him just put on the AA role. It's you Ice Blast, you Ice Vortex. Your job is very, very limited. And I don't think they're playing at full capacity right now. Yeah, it just doesn't feel like they're really hitting the milestones that they need to item-wise. They're not making those big team fight plays that we sort of saw their lineup maybe initially geared around with this draft so just kind of feels like they're stuck in a weird spot where they can't really do what they initially wanted to do and they haven't really hit that pivot point yet into doing anything else so it's a little bit rough for them all the while tomato 
uh, use that DD rune to finish off that tier 3 tower mid. So, just laying siege from the low ground. They do need to be careful, though. That Aegis okay, is about to be go. reclaimed. 15 seconds away, and four zoomers on it. Can they get it? Sammy Boy has the Chronosphere. If they can land this correctly... Eh, okay. No Chrono deploy just yet. That's an interesting supernova. Might just be a sacrificial play, but Tomato, he wants back in. The Stone Gaze is going to be popped. They're actually going to try and protect this, but... I really don't think this is actually going to be a fight for them. They're just trying to get everybody out of there safely, and four zoomers aren't really in a position to keep on pushing forward, even with the supernova and the stone gaze being thrown down there. They just don't know what's on the other side if they push across that river. And really, they have BKB on Brax now. They have BKB on Sammy Boy, and they have a full Aghanim Scepter up on Gunner. Still needs two more points in Exhort for that maximum damage, but if they can get another play going, they know that some of those ultimates are already used. We know how key that Stone Gaze is in these fights, especially uh, without the Aghanim Scepter being built up on this Medusa. Instead, he's gone for that uh, Blink Dagger instead, so that way he's just immediately able to follow up Saber Light and always be there to support his teammate. But still, I am waiting for Gunner to be the Gunner that we saw on that Ember Spirit, where he's able to make these plays. He's able to sort of show his strength because he is one of the best. He has shown himself to be one of the best in the region. And I am still sort of quietly waiting for him to make these plays. I know he can. And at the same time, for Zoomers, are you winning while you're sort of pushing them out of your jungle, trying to get control back? Not exactly, but... I don't feel like they can risk using their spells. We're going to see sort of that Roshan timing affect the map. I don't think either team is going to make that sort of risky play unless we see another smoke coming out. And I'm really sad we didn't see Forzumer smoke up immediately after that one smoke failed. And this ward is going to give them all the knowledge they need on the Undying side to say, okay, they're going to play here. They just dewarded us. They're placing sentries. We're going to take your outpost again. And we are setting ourselves up again for a very easy Roche where four Zoomers need to think of their point of entry. How are they going to get into this pit again? And I think if they give another Aegis over to the side of Undying, then Tomato might just break your base. It might be a little bit too much for you to handle. So Undying, very much aware of how valuable that Roche is going to be. About a minute away from the sort of fastest possible respawn. So setting up. They're sort of looking to see when and if Roshan is going to be back up in a position where they can take it. Meanwhile, for four Zoomers, they can't afford to do the same. They really aren't pushing across. They're just looking to continue finding farm. Sammy Boy has the BKB, but he's going to need more now in the way of actual damage output. So he's just continuing to maneuver his way through the jungle, hoping to get as much as he can before that next fight breaks out. So as of right now, neither side really looking too keen on forcing this one, but... We're going to see that five-man smoke now. Sammy Boy has picked up a double damage rune, so this could be their moment. If they get the Chrono down, if they can finally land that Chrono into Ice Blast combo with the double damage rune on Sammy, maybe they take this one, but they need to find the right target. And Ocean, I think, got a little too close. He's actually going to pop. Oh, here we go. They're looking for Moon, but oh no. He has to BKB it. Pop the BKB. They will get Moon, but uh, they need more. Tornado is going to fly through. Not going to hit anything up, though. That Supernova does end up getting used. And now Saber Light's oh, in. He's going to go for the arena into the spirit. Gunner's going to get caught. Ryle's pushing in. Can they get the damage in? Tomato pushing his way forward as well with the Stone Gaze. And they will be able to take Gunner down. The Chronosphere will be deployed, but he's actually stunned. The Stone Gaze locks him down, so Sammy can't do any damage. And he's dead, too. Oh, no. Spore Zoomers, this is falling apart here. They've lost two cores. There is going to be a buyback from the Invoker. But Brax, at this point, is just getting sort of bullied out of the fight. But... They are back in onto Brow. Can they bring him down? Yes, they can. Okay. Ocean able to find that kill. Brax is now in onto Tomato, and the reinforcements are starting to group up. At this point, if you're undying, it might be time to go. It's just Tomato and Saberlight at this point, and yeah, they are just going to back themselves away. So, three heroes dead on the undying side, but that buyback from the Invoker is going to hit them pretty hard, and while the gold gain will favor them, you set this Invoker back. This was already a hero for Gunner, where we were talking about him maybe lagging behind some of his counterparts. Now... He, wow, he's really far down there. He's lower than both Saberlight and Moon Meander net worth-wise after that buyback. Yeah, and that was the chrono that maybe it is enough to kill off that Void Spirit. It's definitely not enough to kill off Saberlight, but you aren't able to right-click at all during it. You don't get anything onto Medusa, and Tomato, with this Blink Dagger, has perfect positioning. He immediately stones up that Faceless Void. You die in your own Chronosphere, I think, and that was a fight where even the Egg was sort of committed and wasted by Dubu on the other side, and now 
if you're undying, you will force them to come fight you. You're going to start hitting this Roshan with the Medusa, even though Rao is still respawning himself, because I don't think four Zoomers can really post up and give you a fight. If they want to make any attempt at this defense of the Rosh, they're going to need to come after this uh, Ice Blast, but really, after scouting it out, maybe you see sort of a hero play coming in from the Pango. He is hasted, but aside from that, I really don't think there's enough time. We can see that Cataclysm come out, but I mean, it's Cataclysm. Everybody just walks out of it without any control, and this is another Aegis in the hands of the Dusa. Yep. Tomato will take the Aegis. He grabs the cheese. The shard... Honestly, he could just take it himself, but it looks like he didn't pass it off to... Who did he pass it off to? Was it Brawl who took it? I think he just took it. Oh, yeah. He just ate it. My bad. Sorry. So, cold-blooded online. Good to go with the second life, and... Uh... Undying are going to look for the fight. They send the Medusa mid as a bit of a distraction while the rest of the team will be maneuvering to the south. And I don't think four Zoomers know that this is coming. Sammy Boy would make a massive target for them if they could get in, but Ooh. they're going to miss initially. Sammy, though, still on the run. Can they lock him down? No. So instead, they'll go after the Ancient Apparition Husky. Very quickly taken down, but Sammy's actually still on the run here. Ocean's able to TP away. Sammy should be looking to do the same as his TP scrolls back up. And Moon's TPing. They're flooding in TPs. I don't think they're going to catch him, but still, Sammy Boy, who is farming down here, everything was great, has to now go all the way like this, running back to his side of the map where all of the camps are really more or less already farmed. And Tomato says, no, 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 no. This is where I farm. You don't get to do anything here. And we're seeing the Void also fall behind pretty heavily. He's going back for that Sanjin Yasha, sort of have that safety net where even if he does get stunned up by that Aether Remnant, there's a very uh, slim chance of him getting bursted down. But at the same time, when does a Dying say, okay, Tomato, enough farming. You're going to hit this tower. We're going to siege up here. He's making his way towards an Agi Plank. So then the counter initiation is going to be even stronger coming in from this Dusa and... I feel like we just got out of a game where we saw this unstoppable Medusa with its second Aegis, cold-blooded, level 22. This is going to be pretty sad. Tabata will get it started, pushing his way forward. The EMP, though, going to burn a little bit of that mana away, but not really enough to dissuade him. Tomato just keeps on going. Melee Rax taking a pretty substantial amount of damage. Meanwhile, up in the top lane, uh, Bryle is pushing out onto the tier 3 there as well, so you're getting hit up on multiple sides, and... Of course, Zoomers don't really have a response right now to either. Sammy Boy's not even in the base at the moment, so they know that they're not going to be able to do too much until that Faceless Void returns. So Undying realize that they can just do whatever they want in the base. They'll take the entire middle lane of Rax. Does Tomato, though, now swing his way top? You still got the Aegis. You could probably afford to go a little bit greedier here. And they're going to do it. Tomato will push his way in. Tier 3 tower under attack, and Sammy Ooh, Boy... Oh, big snake. Where is he? Saber light, though. Okay. That's an interesting attempt. Gunner, though, pops the BKB, and now four Zoomers gonna try yeah gonna try to hold their opponents off not looking for the actual fight though still sammy boy again not in the base not in a position to sort of follow this one up as he's just farming up in that south side jungle so at no point can four zoomers really fully commit for the fight they're gonna do everything they can to sort of just maybe push undying back a little bit but at a certain point undying have to realize if your opponents are this hesitant to push forward there has to be a reason for it i don't know if they have confirmed vision of sammy boy down in that south side but they should at least suspect that he's not in position as they are going to try to push their way forward rax though doing his best to sort of stand on that front line but here comes brawl in for the fight in him up with silence into the taunt from the remnant they are dropping him low but now the ice blast he's going to be committed it does hit onto brawl and now well sammy is back can they really do this tomato's getting hit up by the rolling thunder sammy's going to try to jump in not killing the chrono and now with that uh, supernova being thrown down, Sammy, they got to be very careful here. The Chrono will be deployed. Oh, no. He's got to dodge the stun, though, but the Cataclysm will come through. They take down Tomato. The problem is, the Aegis is going to bring him right back into the fight, but they're still pushing forward. BKB's active. Sammy and Brax on the back line. They've taken down Saberlight. They get Dubu as well, but they still need to deal with this Medusa, and as of right now, they're just not able to do so. In fact, Bryle is actually going to push forward. That Stone Gaze did hit Sammy up momentarily, but they're not going to be able to finish the kill, and now they've got to regroup. Starting to pull out of their opponent's base, getting themselves back in the line, but Bryle back in, looking for the jump forward. Gunner's going to get taken down, and now I don't know if they can do this. There's no buyback on that Invoker. It's just going to be down to Sammy and Brax, but without the Chrono, how much can they really do here? They don't even really have much to throw out there. The Ice Blast is back up, I suppose, for the Ancient Apparition, but... Tomato really doesn't care about that, and neither does Brawl for that matter. So they're going to just jump their way forward. Timbersaw taking a lot of damage, but they're going to be able to fall back. But while he does so, the Rack's still under attack here. Saberlight blinking forward, missing on the spear. But really, at this point, all you're doing is just sort of breaking four Zoomers up, keeping them on the back foot, making sure they're not able to sort of stay cohesive as a unit. And that means Tomato just kept on firing away. The entire top lane of Rack's taken, and now Sammy... 
Uh, this isn't really going to really? do too much. And that, okay, oh, no. that's a mistake. Sammy's going to get caught out. He's pinned to the effigy, taking him down there. As Ryle will Wait, now fall, but it? this is horrible. Ryle, oh, no. Okay, he dies, but Grax is going to go down as well. Ocean's just sort of spinning around here, but there's not much left for him to do. And you just opened the door for Tomato to keep on pushing. He's in onto the tier fours now, and down in that bottom lane, Moon Meander, he's looking to push for the final lane of Rax. They could secure the Megas right now, and that... I, I mean, four Zoomers, I think, sort of walked themselves into that. They could have just maybe fallen back and allowed Undying to sort of make their retreat. Instead, they force the issue, and it doesn't go well for them, and now Tomato, again, is just going to siege this one up. And similar to that previous game, if you just let this Medusa leave, you were still waiting for your Invoker to respawn. You wouldn't have had to buy back on these two heroes, oh, and boy, you're going to lose him right before he respawns too. Oh no. Husky's dead. Brax is stunned. Thanks, guys. Thanks, I mean, is that just game? He's dead for two yeah. minutes. It's GG. Yep, there it is. GG called. Undying. Able to do it again. It, as you said, back in game one, four Zoomers sort of walked into a similar trap, just... At a certain point, you, you gotta you gotta cut your losses. You gotta let it go. But they just keep on trying to force the issue, and for the second time now in the series, that sort of all-in strategy really just blows up in their face. And really, it's the simple idea of they just beat us to a pulp. We don't want them to just get this tower. This is so annoying. We can't kill this Medusa. We thought that we had these tools to deal with it, and you very clearly do. When Gunner was alive, it felt very difficult for Tamada to be able to push into the ice wall, the deafening blast, the tornado EMP, even though, of course, he's Tamado. He's always going to dodge that EMP with Manta style like a Chad, but at the end of the day, Sammy Boy, he had to commit that chrono just to get the tail end of that first life. And even though Egg was already expended, Arena was already down, you buy back on two heroes, you immediately put the pressure back on. And I think, again, you could have just let them leave. You could have just let them walk away. But for Zoomers, they try to make a play that they really shouldn't have. And they lose in a very similar fashion to that first game where Sammy Boy gets a little bit too far forward. And Undying are immediately there with the punishment. Saberlight's too good. And you sort of just feed and waterfall your heroes into a position where you have to GG out. Even though Gunner is respawning in three seconds, you lose dieback on both of your heroes, and then the game just suddenly ends. I think for Zoomers, they're getting a little bit too far ahead of themselves. There was definitely a little bit more life in that game. Mm -hmm. This feels like a scenario where they're getting baited into a... We will not play from behind. We'll go all in for this to try and keep ourselves even or ahead, and... By doing that, you you just end what is supposed to be a run where you could maybe, as you said, sort of play it out, draw the match out. Sure, you're down two lanes of racks there, but you live to fight another day. But four zoomers basically say, no, we either win it right here or we refuse to play from behind. And I don't know, to a certain extent, I suppose I can understand and maybe give a certain degree of respect to that kind of viewpoint. But... Here in a grand final, it seems like maybe the, the wrong sort of hill to die on, so to speak. Four Zoomers, in each of those losses in Game 3 here and in back in Game 1, they really could have just pulled it back, but just, I don't know. It seems like they've, they've made these plays in the past and it's worked out for them, so maybe to a certain extent they just sort of assume it's going to work out again, but Undying is not quite the same caliber of opponent compared to what they had been facing in the past. Four Zoomers aren't really going to get away with that uh, against an opponent of this level of strength. And really, just both these teams, they're so close. It feels like either of them could take games off of each other at any point, but Gunner, he had such a terrible game. He really just wasn't able to do anything. Undying shut them down so well. Last pick Void Spirit, and then Saber White focuses all of his attention onto him. And we've seen, while this Void is incredibly strong, if you're able to get some of those Aegises into your hand, if you work towards that third Roshan where maybe the Ag spawns, and then it feels like suddenly the enemy team can't do anything versus you. And we saw this hero so many times in the past, this Medusa pick, just always getting banned, picked, really undervalued, overvalued, first phased. I think now uh, both sides just get it panned out, take it out, don't want to see it anymore because it feels like both games where this Medusa pick sort of happened, no matter what four Zoomers were able to do, and they drafted around the idea that we have the tools, we can kite it out, we're going to be fine, guys, it's going to be great. They just sort of fell prey to the strength of their own lineup. They should know exactly how to counter it out, how to play versus it, and they tried, but the execution from Undying was just a little bit too good. And I feel like Tomato, 
seven zero and eleven, he was never under any threat. Once he had that second Aegis, I really think that four Zoomers, even though they gave it sort of the best college try they could, they could never kill this Dusa ever. Yeah, just. You can't let that happen. You have to apply that pressure. You have to try to slow the Medusa down. Otherwise, things like this are going to happen to you. So, Undying? I mean, it works out. They lose game two to a Medusa strat. They basically say, okay, we'll we'll try that ourselves. And it works out for them. So, Undying will take that sort of swing game here in the series, jumping out to a 2-1 lead, which means they are now just one more win away from claiming for them, uh, excuse me, from claiming for themselves the title of loot bet pro series six champions getting the bragging rights getting the lion's share of the prize pool and potentially setting themselves up quite nicely for those upcoming regional qualifiers for ti so one win away we'll see what they can do here they have one four out of five here today so momentum wise they're looking pretty good but for four zoomers really we can never count them out they're one of the strongest teams in their region for a reason and you got to assume they're going to have something sort of up their sleeves here coming into this fourth match so we are going to be stepping away for a little bit, but when we return, we'll have game four. Excuse me, game four between Undying and Four Zoomers. Will it be the final match of this grand final, or will Four Zoomers be able to push us to the full five matches? We'll be finding out in just a couple of minutes.